On the next topic, we want to talk about some of the code changes uh, uh, regarding GFCI. And Alan, um, can you shed some light on that? Because I know there was a ton of changes and it impacts a lot of people that are watching this. Yeah, process. absolutely. A lot, of, a lot of changes within the GFCI realm of the code. And, and uh, we're, we're going to talk primarily here around 210.8. Uh, and, and one of the things that we need to understand that, uh, that, that unfolds here is remember the structure of the code, right? So uh, GFCI requirements are found throughout the code. Uh, we're going to focus here on 210. Remember that chapters one through four apply uh, in general to all, all, uh, all installations, and then chapters five through seven modify one through four. So uh, what the correlating committee uh, did through some actions, uh, putting its task group together and, and trying to understand that and asking the code panels to look closely at how they communicate that uh, uh, modification in chapters five through seven back to chapters two was really important. And we, and we did some, uh, did some uh, alignment with that language to make sure uh, that it would, that it would uh, read as a modification to the chapter two requirements. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it, it provides some, some good consistency now in, in those other articles that, that modify chapter two. So let's let's jump in here and and begin to talk about it because we have a number of a number of changes in 2108 that relate to the residential structure, and uh, the first one here really begins to uh, begins to expand things because we've expanded it from 120 volts to 250 volts, and I think that uh, that begins to uh, look at those receptacles in a, in a much broader sense, and, and I'm going to let the discussion kind of unfold here in those various areas with regard to what that hits and, and let, you, let those folks here think about where, where that's going to hit them in, in, in the home. Uh, but we'll talk specifically about those. And, and Chad, maybe you can start this off with regard to what's going on in basements. No, glad to, Alan. You know, as we look at 210.A for residential dwellings, you know, the hazard is the same, whether it's a 125-volt receptacle or a 250-volt receptacle. So I think the code panel recognized the areas where the hazard is the same and why there doesn't necessarily need to be a limitation on voltage. Uh, you know, basements have traditionally focused on unfinished areas to now include finished basements. Again, the same hazard exists with the potential for moisture or water on the floor, so a damp or wet location potentially, and electrical products. So this expansion really, you know, from a lot of things will make it easier for code enforcement and the installer. There's no question about whether the area is not finished now, but maybe finished later, or, or you know, what parts of it will be finished versus unfinished. Now, if it's a 125 or 250 volt receptacle in a basement period, it'll have GFCI protection. And that's a, a significant change. Keep in mind basements, when we're talking about a basement, we're, we're um, talking about concrete on grade. So if you know, that's going to be conductive, if we put a tile floor on there, the entire floor mm -hmm. is going to be conductive. So that's a very safety-driven revision. Yes. And then we've got the uh, sinks. There's a language there that's going to impact you potentially uh, you know, within six feet of a sink. So this could potentially impact uh, a receptacle for a range. Keep in mind, 210.8A is receptacle outlets, and now it's 125 volt to 250 volt. So your laundry comes in, and the range is going to be there. And you know, if you're within six feet of that range, you're going to have to protect the receptacle outlet for that range with GFCI. Absolutely. And Jim, that measurement is made from the edge of the sink to the receptacle. So the code really clarified how you take that measurement too as well. That's right, and there's some other changes in there. We explained to you how you're going to make that measurement, and in 2017, we said not going through doors. So if I had a sink and I had cabinets with doors and a receptacle mm -hmm. underneath, in 2017, that did not have to be GFCI protected. In 2020, it will because we took the doors out. That's, That's right. Point. That's right. What about laundry spaces, Mike? Yeah, and the laundry area, the laundry spaces in a dwelling unit uh, have been impacted by the, uh, the driving language that expanded the GFCI requirement from 125 volt to the 250 volt level. So that's a significant impact uh, and now would include the dryers uh, in addition to uh, any 125 volt, 15 or 20 amp 
receptacle. And something to really watch for, and the GFCI kind of acts like a, a, a policing agent. Uh, if you get a neutral to ground connection downstream of a service main bonding jumper, but when these appliances like dryers are sold uh, at a retail outlet, uh, they're typically sold without a, a cord. And the cord can be purchased in a three wire configuration or a four wire configuration, but typically those appliances come with a neutral bonding strap already installed. So uh, the installers or the owners are gonna have to pay attention to that. If there's a GFCI ahead of that circuit, it's certainly gonna let you know that it's not wired correctly. Yeah, Mike, I agree, and I think that also applies to the ranges as well. So you mentioned the dryers, but certainly the ranges can mm -hmm. fall into that as well. Yeah. And with that factory default bonding strap in place, uh, the GFCI is going to find those wiring mistakes and will trip for sure. So what will end up happening in a situation like that is we have a miswired dryer or a miswired range and a homeowner is going to think he's got a bad circuit breaker when in reality the GFCI is just doing its job. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And the additional change there, if, um, if we can talk for a minute about uh, Section 210.63 uh, with GFCI. GFCIs seem to expand from uh, addition of the code. Each addition of the code, we see expansion of that, but uh, it actually expands uh, uh, beyond just the outdoor receptacle provided uh, to service a unit within 25 feet of the unit. It, it really is uh, required to be provided wherever that type of equipment is requiring servicing, indoors or outdoors. So even if we have like an air handler in the attic and, and sometimes you get a water condensate yeah. backup, I mean, you could ultimately have water in that situation and you have power tools or, or something in that situation doing the maintenance. Sure. It's great to have ground fault protection in those, in those uh, conditions. Absolutely. Yes. Another uh, change, big change for dwelling units that we'll take a look at is a new first level subdivision 210.8F. So this is limited to dwelling units and it's not in A for a very specific reason. And what this really is, is it's a, a, a large expansion of two pole type GFCIs that are gonna be required. So this language in this new first level subdivision F is gonna include all outlets that are 150 volts to ground, 50 amps and less. So at 240 or 208, 50 amps and less, you're going to be impacted. So this is going to include um, a, 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 a heat pump, an air conditioner condensing unit. One of the things that we need to, to keep in mind here is that this requirement addresses outlets. And, it, and an outlet is defined in Article 100 as a point on the wiring system at which we take current to utilization equipment. So if I've got a receptacle, I've got a receptacle outlet. Mm -hmm. If I've got conductors in a junction box for lighting, I have a lighting outlet. If I hardwire a condensing unit, that is an outlet. So this is going to impact a lot of equipment outside of the dwelling unit. There is an exception that specifically excludes lighting outlets. and. That's other than what is in 210.8C, which is crawl spaces. So if you have lighting in a crawl space, you're going to have to provide GFCI protection. I think that also I think that also excludes uh, the heat strips and the or the heat uh, yes. uh, items back in 426 for for pipes because people will ultimately have uh, those plugged in in an eave and uh, ultimately those would be 30 milliamps instead of a GFCI typically. So the exception, I believe, also covers that as well. That's yeah, right, that and, and, right, and that would be for de-icing, and as you pointed out, ground fault protection would be provided. And ground fault protection, that's not people protection, that's at right. 30 milliamps. People protection is a class A GFCI device, so that's gonna open in four to six milliamps. That's correct, that's right. Mm -hmm. So let's also look at appliances in general. So this was kind of a, 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 a fairly significant change for the user uh, in the code. Uh, and if we look at the GFCI protection, we had uh, dishwashers for residential applications being protected in the 17 code. And these particular uh, a discussion unfolded and the decision was made to move all of the appliances back to Article 422. And back there we have uh, the dishwashers now, we have uh, the, 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 the items for sump pumps, we have items like uh, the uh, um, dispensing or uh, dispensing machines and those kind of things, right, back in 422. But 
what we what we what we're required to do here is make sure we have either ground fault protection for appliances uh, in the infrastructure, or we're required to have GFCI protection in the cord. Okay, so the important thing here is is right for the contractor. I think is when final comes up, the enforcer is going to go you know, show me your ground fault, right? So is the ground fault going to be in the receptacle or the breaker, or you're going to have to demonstrate it's there from the appliance itself in this condition. So in order to final that, to have the ground fault protection in place. And I think the other big item out of this one is the GFCI on that dishwasher now expands beyond dwellings. So now we're picking up dishwashers in those commercial kitchens and all the other areas where we have dishwashing equipment, we are now picking up uh, needing to protect those with GFCI as well. Yeah, you know, Alan, it's also important not to lose sight that whatever GFCI means you pick, that it's accessible because they do require testing and that ability sometimes in some of these locations can be difficult to achieve. Good point. Yeah, and in 422.5, what, what we're telling you there is you have to protect this equipment with GFCI. There's multiple ways that you can do it. That's right. uh, and another big piece there is it's, a, it's different than what you see in 210.8. It's 150 volts to ground or less. So that it's all of your 240 volt and 208 volt systems and it's 60 amps or less. So uh, in many cases, contractors are used to just going into 210.8 saying, hey, here's where I look to see GFCI. You're gonna have to highlight that first level subdivision because you have to check 422.5.